I'm going to have to talk and walk. Um, yeah, so I'm starting to get on a bit now. Um, decided the fish and patrolling behind the back of a wee bed. Um, there's weed all over the area, but I thought I used a marker. First time I've actually used a marker for ages. This place is quite weedy. Not um really thick, but a lot of the bottom's got a covering of weed. Um, now the area of just uh just to spread some bait along is actually uh, weedy but it's probably only six inches to a foot maybe um, and, uh, in front of that out into Lake Mall it's just seems quite smoothy silt um, so all I've done is spread some 15 mil and 12 mil krill, well 16 mil krill and 12 mil krill, just um, along about 10 yards area, and um, I've then. Spread a little bit um, of uh, Nash coconut creme in 15s. Um, hopefully, I think it'll go. I think it's more likely to produce a bite in the morning than in the night. Um, I think there are, it's only about eight to nine foot. Yeah, it's actually. Um, a lot further out than it looks, actually. It's only about three quarters of the way across. Yeah, there it is, about my level. Can't really see it very well, um, but the lights are on to go, so I'm gonna put a probably a trolley if I'm honest. Don't really like them, but um, it's probably gonna be the safest bet. So I'm gonna just mark it up to that um, far side. Just clip the rod up, just so that um. I know. And then I'll probably a bit of walk out actually. Um I'll probably put another one across towards the snag. Probably a bag or something like that. Probably I'll have a little lead around in it. Flick a bag out there I think. But anyway, I need to uh, get this sorted. So I'm gonna uh, just flick it across, then go around and get the marker. Um, put a bit better already. So um, I didn't see any fish there, but there are fish cruising up and down there. So I'm pretty confident this fish were on that far bank. Then I'm gonna put the other rod towards the uh, snag, and um, maybe put a solid bag out there with a break, a uh, drop off lead, because I've, I've got a few tied up already anyway. Um, because I know that's going to present right, but I let it rain first just to see what the bottom's like. Um, I think that'll do. Anyway, let's get it done. There are the uh, back of the thickest part of the weed. Just put a little bit of bait, basically just spread it. Just a little bit smarter. Right, 
Just tend to eat. Just um, walking back around to get the uh, microphone. Um, I managed to catch it with the lead. So uh, at least I know I got it on the area. <laughs> Can't get much more uh, on the money than uh, picking up the microphone. But um, I managed to clip it, wind it back, and luckily I left a really slack clutch on the uh, spool. So um, I managed to wind the float across. I'm going to have to just crank it all the way back. Um, but I clipped it all up. So, uh, hopefully, you alright? Probably still getting down on the other leg. There's a couple of guys stalking actually. But, um, can't believe I'm going to use a chord. I haven't used a chord for ages. Not much of that. Not a big fan of them because everyone uses them, but this lake doesn't get a lot of pressure. So, um, I don't mind using them in the last session I did on here. It was a couple of years ago. I had three on shots, so um, I don't mind too much. Anyway, All right, I'm going to turn the camera off because uh, it's a bit overgrown along here. And there's, um, there's a guy stalking, so I'm talking quietly, so don't really want to disturb any of the guys stalking. Right, I'm going to turn a bit. Morning. It's uh, about quarter past six. Um, unfortunately, I had a quiet night. Um, yeah, I don't know. Didn't manage to get anything. Was getting plenty of liners, but um, nothing. Uh, nothing picked up at that bait, which was uh, quite frustrating. A couple of fish show uh, uh, down towards the other end. Um, I heard the old fish here. I think maybe two that I heard show relatively close to where my left rod is. It was definitely along that margin somewhere. Um, I didn't hear much up to the right, but it's very shallow up that way. Um, but some that has just before I put the camera on, something quite good it sounded like it uh, crashed up that way. So I thought maybe they might move out of there in the night. That's why I thought maybe having a a bait on that margin might produce a bite. But I've got a feeling they probably stayed in there, guys. I'm assuming to get a really good sleep, because normally on here I get a really good sleep because it's so peaceful and quiet. Um, there's literally no noise pollution around here. Obviously in the days it's noisy because of all the wildlife, but um, there were quite a few owls calling last night. I actually heard a cow as well. So we must have cows um, in uh, one of their fields further up. I've not heard that before. Um, normally you hear foxes and badgers. You always hear owls, there's loads of owls. 
So as soon as one of them starts uh, talking, all the others start responding. But, uh, you hear deer, but I didn't actually hear much of that. Yeah, it's actually better getting out of the bag. It feels so much more uh, comfortable. So what? Well, I don't know what the temperature was last night, but um, it was definitely in the upper teens, I reckon. I don't know why it's picking out all the uh, noises around the lake, but um, that's one more thing I love about this place, it's all the uh, wildlife you get. about um, 10 ish. Because um, I've probably already said it, but I'm going um, going up to uh, Chester tonight for the weekend. So uh, have a little look around up there, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, uh, see, uh, see how that goes. Good coffee, huh? Nice and strong in the morning. Uh, I think most days the first thing I have in the morning is a coffee. That's what I have before I get to work. I, uh, I actually have to get up at quarter to four most days for my work. And, uh, always have a coffee in the morning on the uh, drive down to um, the depot which takes me back sort of 10 minutes in the morning which is enough time to drink my coffee uh, yeah good stuff love it probably drink way too much of it To be honest, I drink, um, drink so much coffee that uh, caffeine has pretty much no impact on me anymore. Um, I just love the taste of coffee. No Oh, there's a massive bubbler over my, uh... Where I spread some of the bait around it. Actually looks like that could be some out there now feeding. That's a good sign. If 
probably trying to dig out these baits, I suppose. And that light weed and silk. Hopefully, anyway. I was trying to get it on camera, but I know, um, I don't think it would come out very well. It stopped a bit there as well. I was just looking across thinking, what's that on the surface? And then realised it's bubble, bubbles coming out. But, um, definitely looked like a, looked like a fish. It's moving, moving along as opposed to being quite static. Usually if it's gas, generally the bubbles are bigger. And, um, it stays in one place. Whereas if it's a fish disturbing the bottom, it generally it moves along and it kind of fizzes as opposed to bubbles. I think that might have been something that just put his head down and have a little look around. Right then. Um Better look about the swim. So many, um, so many roach, and uh, perch as well. I think we've been right. So, big feather has just come up over the far side. It could be gas. I'm not sure. Um, right, anyway, um, I thought I'd just, uh, give you a better view of the, the swim, just to, uh, basically just show you what it's like fishing here. There's the rod. As you see, the rods are positioned like that, because... Um, the swims are really tight, um, they're only made to fit brownies, really, because um, it fits with the nature of the lake, it's a very um, natural lake, and we, don't, we don't really want massive bivvies stuck in swims, I mean you could get one in at a push, but I'll show you what I mean. So there's the rods. There's the brolly. And then behind this is solid bush. So as you can see there's just enough space to get the rolly in. A bit of space in front of you. And there's the rods. Um the rods are like that also because they're angled towards the uh towards the bait, so the right rod is to the end of um this tree here. Uh, there's actually a floating log which is obviously broke off and bobbing around. Um, there's a, uh, I've got a solid bag over there. Just that's it. Just a solid bag on its own. I have a little lead around and um, this is light weed. Um, very similar to, to the margins. It's a light cover and a weed. Um, the left rod is um, is over to where's the tree? So it's tree line. It's over here. Off of this bank is about three, four rod lengths off of this bank. Um, over the back of the um, the densest part of the weed. Um, I think I actually might have done a video of that because I had the marker on that yesterday. So um, I just got that on a chod. I just spread um, a bit of bait around there. Quite a bit of bait, about. Probably about 100 baits or so in total. I put um, 16 mil and 12 mil sticky baits krill, um, and I, I mixed in with um, a few of the uh, Nash coconut creme white ones. And um, I put some in halved, and most of them are whole, but um, I put a few half baits as well because they tend to flutter down on top of the weed. Um, and I just got a uh, sticky baits white uh, krill 60 minner on a chod, naked chod with um, the Nash drop off um, uh, lead system they got. 
and it's not one bought out. First time used it actually. Uh, the right rod is a uh, solid bag. I've got the Avid um, drop off system on there with a little Avid 2.5 ounce lead. No, 1.5 ounce lead. Um, and a little crow after. And a few crow uh, pellets and a bit of their active uh, ground bait mix. And that is it. Um, I've had liners on both, but as you, it, well, you can't see it very well, but it is really shallow. Um, I mean, that rod out there is about 8 or 9 foot. Um, I say where I'm fishing out there is probably 4 or 5 foot at the most. Um, and it slowly deepens off over to that side. Um, and uh, it's only a couple of foot in front of me, so I imagine any fish mat moving through is what's been causing it, the liners. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's about it. Um, there we go. But as you can see, it's uh, just a lovely overgrown paradise. <laughs> I do love one here. I'm surprised it didn't come back. She's got the barrow uh, up in there. That's um, basically actually stops any wildlife coming in. Because I've had deer walk into my swim on here before. A little monk jumped here. Um, and uh, also, if anyone's walking around, it lets them know there's someone in here so that they don't walk straight, in, straight into your swim. So, uh, it does pay to uh, do that sort of thing. Um, there was a guy yesterday stalking in this uh, over here. It's um, real tight. I think he had a little uh, seven foot stalking wall. Uh, sound like a fish up under the tree here. And uh, I know we had a couple up in the corner, but I ain't got my, uh, I didn't bring my stalking one today. I've uh, obviously my um, scope rods are only 10 foot, but they're still too long to uh, creep around up in the back of there. But, um, Right, basically, I just uh, thought, I'd, thought I was in then. It tightened right up, pulled up to the top, um, up to the blank, then slackened off. I thought a fish had picked it up and um, started coming towards me, but there was nothing there. Um, I went to get it back out on the spot, and um, I managed to get, the bait managed to come off. Which um, I've not really had before, to be honest. Um, so, I actually made a couple of recasts. Unfortunately, it's popping looks like a stop now, which is typical. Um, there's definitely fish over there. So, I'm going to put another one. I've got the, um, these are the krill um, floros, white and pink. I'm going to put another white one on just because I've um, put some white freebies out there anyway. Um, I'm using an avid, um, I don't know what they call these, pop up peg, I think they're called. Basically, just screws in. So easy to touch. Um, I use quite a straight chod. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you quick because I really want to get it back in there. Um, there you go. 
So he's got a street chord. That's running on a um, one of the cho uh, Nash um, naked chord beads. And that's just going straight. We've got a real long link down to the um, new Nash um, lead eject, helicopter lead eject system. I've got a Fox 2 ounce lead on there, which has actually got a heavy lead, guys. Um, I think I might actually put a little lead, small lead on, I think I've got one and a half. Um, obviously, that ejects the lead. If you get basically if you get a fish, the lead will eject. The hook link oh it's bubbling again. The hook link slides down and it pushes the release on the lead and the lead just drops straight off. So it means you've got no lead on there at all if you get a bite. Um, but it retains on there um when you're just reeling in the cast out. So it's a really good little feature. Obviously there's loads of weed out there so I um I wanted to just get rid of the lead as soon as I got a bite, so. Um, I'm going to get it back out and I'm going to put another couple of baits around the hook bait, I think. And just catapult a few over on top of it. There's definitely some fish out there. Right. Uh, let's get it done. Yeah, I was just saying, if I was here for the day, I would um, probably give it a few more hours in here, and then um, go off stalking. So I'm um, probably trick a little bit of bait onto onto the areas again, and uh, just, uh, pack uh, pack a lot of it down. I mean, if I was staying another night, I don't. You can leave it all here, and uh, no one comes along. Just uh, pack it all up together, and that, so it's not um, all over the place, and uh, no one's ever around. So uh, it's quite nice in that sense. Um, I got a uh, sawn off, sawn off, but um, I haven't actually. I haven't actually um, put a real nut on it yet and set it up. I mean, it's uh, what I need to do because um, why not? Right on right on um. Yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't got it set up yet, the sawn off, which is, if you don't know what it is, it's, um, a six foot telescopic, part telescopic rod. It's basically the same principle of the scopes and the dwarf rods, um, but it's a six footer. It's got a lovely cork handle as well. Um, but it's, a. Uh, But they're really compact. They're absolutely brilliant little rods. But if you wanted to travel really light, then uh, you have a couple of them. Um, to be fair, if I was doing a day, I know I was fishing the, the smaller lakes up here. You could, I mean, to be fair, you could bring them anyway and just leave them in a the van because uh, no one's around. But um, you could quite easily go back, put the um, main stuff in the van, and. Have a little stalk around. That is the nice, uh, nice thing about uh, this this place. I mean, to be fair, it's it's better suited to stalking. It really is. Um, I think a lot of the time, the nights, um, you know, you're better off sort of setting up like this for the night, like I have. But. Um, Oh, there's a load of bubbles just come up over the area. Mm. 
Well, that's quite positive. I think that might go off in a minute, actually. There's, um, I don't know why you can see it. It's so grainy when I zoom in on this. Bit of an old camera. But that there, uh, where is it? Is a bubbler. My rod's sort of bit to the side over here. But I'd say going by those uh, couple of liners, is, there is actually fish. Look at around the area. It's shallow, so that line must be quite um, quite flushed at the bottom. So imagine it's fish either cruising in uh, on this margin, or they're picking the line up close to the. Uh, Hope they should be nice. I've been getting a few liners though, I don't know whether uh, I should fire a few more baits over there because um they're clearly clearly stuff moving on. just off the end of here and uh, my rod's just down here the only thing is they're probably up in the water I suppose Might pay to put a zig on, I think. Don't know why, but it's been warm all night. I've caught at a late three on little zigs. So, hmm. Think that rod's going to go in a minute. Um, one thing I've noticed, I mean, it's the same everywhere in it really, but um, if you, Jenny, if you see fish roll or you see a sign of sign of fish in the area, especially at certain times in the day, um, mainly first thing in the morning and then last thing in the evening, um, it's generally a good sign of feeding fish. And, um, Obviously, if it's uh, within the vicinity of a uh, new baited area, um, or your hook bait, um, it always gives you that confidence. It is going absolutely mental right now. Bloody hell, look at it. 
That's right over the top of my update. There's three separate sets of bubbles coming up now. That's that's definitely fish. I reckon a couple of fish have moved into there, definitely. Oh, there's definitely fish on it. <laughs> They're rummaging around in all that weed, trying to find his bait, I reckon. Oh, come on, that'd be absolutely brilliant if that goes off for a session back. Where is Bubbles coming at? I'm sure. I'm sure that is um, bang on the hook bait. I mean, I basically spread bait along this area um, from the other side. If you're standing up um, on this bit here, the bank's quite high up here. You can um, you can see the bank of weed. I don't know how much of that I got on film, but um, I've put the rod back out. Um, I've lifted the front rest up now. Um, fishing on a slightly slack line. Obviously, with a chod, you do need a slight degree of slackness in the line for the um, for the actual little chod rig to be able to settle. I mean, everyone probably knows about chod rigs nowadays, but. Just quickly, the idea of obviously a chod, um, I'm fishing it naked style, so you need it just to force under the weight of the little bit of putty you have on the barrel of the swivel. So it basically just drops down like that. That's why I've got mine set. And instead of adding too much putty, um, I've actually trimmed the boilie a little bit. Um, the 60 millers. The sticky baits crawl ones are so buoyant. Um, so what I've done is I just trim them a little bit, so they just it just slowly falls, and um, that's obviously going to just sit over the top of the uh, the weed there. Um, which was probably about two and a half inches, something like that. Um, I usually fish them really short, but. Um, I wanted it to sort of be lifted up a bit so I knew it was clear of the, uh, the weed. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is just, with the catty, I'm just going to put a little handful. Um, I thought I've actually got um, Sticky Beats Vortex in there as well. 
So I've actually got a Krill Vortex in 16mm, um, the Krill in Sticky Beats Krill in uh, 12mm, and I've also got the Nash um, Coconut Creme in 15 No one else is here. Friday morning, day off of work. Um, ain't got long left, and uh, that chobby on um, the far spot has caught me a fish. They are. Uh, Lovely old common, real dark, real dark common. There's the uh, little trim down one that did the trick. Sticky baits for a white one, trim down just the way it fluttered down on the trolley. Over the uh, bay, I put quite a bit of bait out as well. They are absolutely having it. Um, I think I missed a fish earlier, I think I got an aborted take, um, but this one absolutely nailed it. Um, lovely fish. A bit of a damage on his tail. Don't know how big he is. But, uh, there you go. Jet black. Look at that. Absolutely stunning fish. Love the old one, that is definitely. One of the uh, one of the old commons in the pond. Um, lovely fish. I imagine it's a low double. Feels about low doubles. Um, I might put them on the scales just to see what he weighs. Um, what a stunner, eh? Lovely. Oh. Um. Just get a shot on the other side. Don't want to keep him out for too long. There you go. Wrecking fish. Right then, um, it is five past ten. Um, I'm really, uh, really chuffed with that fish. Um, it was uh, twelve pound one ounce, so uh, only a little one, but um, first, first fish, first session, first fish. Um, so um, I'm glad that I uh, walked around yesterday for a few hours and um, watching them paid off uh, um, 
There's something about in the weed, they're just so much more confident to uh, pick the freebies up. I just think the uh, the nature of the um, the situation um, gives them confidence. They're confident in weed as it is. And um, I do think that they drop their guard a bit when they're feeding in weed. Um, it had to happen. Um, I think I'm earlier when um, it pulled up tight and um, pinged out the clip. I think that was actually an important take. Um, I've not used a trolley for ages, so I was happy to get one on it. Um, and those uh, new Nash injector lead clips are really cool. Um, real good invention, that is. Real good idea. Um, got a feeling I'll be using a lot of chod chods and that on there, just because of the nature of the lake. Um, what I'm going to do, um, I've only got that one rod out now. I quickly trimmed down a trimmed down a bait and lobbed it over there. But um, I really need to get going. Um, my girlfriend finishes up one, and. Um, it takes a bit of time getting out of here, just because of the nature of the place. So, um, most of my stuff's on the barrow. All I've got to do is bring that rod in, put it away, and chuck, the, chuck it over my back. Um, there's still some bubbles coming up over there now. What I'm going to do though, I'm um, going to go around and put, um, I might put all the bait I've got, all the bullies I've got with me. It's got to be a good kilo, kilo and a half. Um, I, put, I think I put the big baits out there. Um, the birds have been on it a bit, so they've, I think they've had a few, but they've left now. Um, so I don't know whether there's any freebies out there still, or well, they might just not be able to see them. There's a little bit of feeding coming up, but I think that um, I think that capture spooked whatever was out there. Um, there's definitely more than one, that's for sure. There's definitely a few out there feeding. And funny enough, yesterday it was common. It was a couple of comments that I seen cruising that area, which um made me think about uh, fishing to it. It was funny, it's, I was looking around the tree, there were fish there, but there's, there's something about um, snaggy trees, they don't... I think you you need a... Uh, you kind of, with, the, with like snags and stuff, you need some kind of area that they're going to feed within the vicinity of that tree. Um, a lot of the lakes I've fish where I've done well fishing to snags. You've got clearer areas nearby or it's hollowed out underneath the snags and they get up in there and you can you can catch them as they're moving in and out. But some of these areas just don't there just doesn't seem to be anything like that around. And um that's why I just put a solid bag out there. I probably should have put a chod out there to be honest but um I've got I've got a lot of confidence in solid bags as well. But um Anyway, I'm um, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna give him the rest of the bait. I think as a bit of a thank you, and um, get him used to having a look around there. Um, and um, get going. So yeah, uh, I really need to get going. Not that there's any time limit, it's only myself that's giving me a time limit because I don't want to get stuck in too much traffic, but <laughs> I already think it might go off again. The ducks have moved back over there now.
think I've got the bite on the GoPro as well. So the GoPro uh, running. Hopefully the uh, film is still rolling. But, um, that'd be quite cool. Didn't get much of the capture because it was him staring at the, the rod rest. But, um, yeah. Wait, and I think I'll better get going. By the time I got back to the car and loaded it, I'm not going to be able to get by it before 11. So. I don't know how much of that I got on film, but um, I've put the rod back out. Um, I've lifted the front rest up now, um, fishing on a slightly slack line. Obviously, with a chod, you do need a slight degree of slackness in the line for the, um, for the actual little chod rig to be able to settle. I mean, everyone probably knows about chod rigs nowadays, but just quickly, the idea of obviously a chod, um, I'm fishing it naked style, so you need it just to force under the weight of the little bit of putty you have on the barrel of the swivel, so it basically just drops down like that, that's why I've got mindset. And instead of adding too much putty, um, I've actually trimmed the boilie a little bit, um, the 60 millers. The sticky baits cruel ones are so buoyant. Um, so what I've done is I just trim them a little bit, so they just it just slowly falls, and um, that's obviously going to just sit over the top of the uh, the weed there. Um, which was probably about two and a half inches, something like that. Um, I usually fish them really short, but. Um, I wanted it to sort of be lifted up a bit, so I knew it was clear of the, uh, the weed. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is just, with the catty, I'm just going to put a little handful. Um, I thought I've actually got um, Sticky Beats Vortex in there as well. So I've actually got a Krill Vortex in 16mm, um, the Krill in Sticky Beats Krill in uh, 12 mils, and I've also got the Nash um, coconut creme in 15. Right, yeah.
Well, I'm really happy. No one else is here. Friday morning, day off of work. Um, ain't got long left, and uh, that chobby on um, the forest spot has caught me a fish. They are. Uh, Lovely old common, real dark, real dark common. There's the uh, little trim down one that did a trick. Sticky baits grow a white one, trim down, just the way it fluttered down on the trolley. Over the uh, bait, I put quite a bit of bait out as well. They are absolutely having it. Um, I think I missed a fish earlier, I think I've gotten a bought and take. Um, but this one absolutely nailed it. Um, lovely fish. A bit of a damage on his tail. Don't know how big he is. But, uh, there you go. Jet black. Look at that. Absolutely stunning fish. Love the old one, that is definitely. One of the uh, one of the old commons in the pond. Um, lovely fish. I imagine it's a low double. Feels about low doubles. Um, I might put them on the scales just to see what he weighs. Um, what a stunner, eh? Lovely. Um, just get a shot on the other side. Don't want to keep them out for too long. There you go. Cracking fish. Right then, um, it is five past ten. Um, I'm really, uh, really chuffed with that fish. Um, it was uh, twelve pound one ounce, so uh, only a little one, but um, first, first fish, first session, first fish. Um, so um, I'm glad that I uh, walked around yesterday for a few hours and um, watching them pay it off but, um, yeah, something about in the weed they're just so much more confident to uh, pick the freebies up I just think the uh, the nature of the um, the situation um, gives them confidence they're confident in weed as it is and um, I do think that they drop their guard a bit when they're feeding in weed um, it had to happen um, 
I think I'm earlier when um, it pulled up tight and um, pinged out the clip. I think that was actually an aborted take. Um, I've not used a trolley for ages, so I was happy to get one on it. Um, and those uh, new Nash injector lead clips are really cool. Um, real good invention, that is. Real good idea. Um, got a feeling I'll be using a lot of chod chods and that on there, just because of the nature of the lake. Um, what I'm going to do, um, I've only got that one rod out now. I quickly trimmed down a trimmed down a bait and lobbed it over there. But um, I really need to get going. Um, my girlfriend finishes up one, and um, it's, it takes a bit of time getting out of here, just because of the nature of the place. So. Um, most of my stuff's on the barrow. All I've got to do is bring that rod in, put it away, and chuck, the, chuck it over my back. Um, there's still some bubbles coming up over there now. What I'm going to do though, I'm, um, I'm going to go around and put, um, I might put all the bait I've got, all the boilies I've got with me. It's got to be a good kilo, kilo and a half. Um, I put, I think I put the big baits out there. Um, the birds have been on it a bit, so they, I think they've had a few, but they've left now. Um, so I don't know whether there's any freebies out there still, or well, they might just not be able to see them. There's a little bit of feeding coming up, but I think that um, I think that capture spooked whatever was out there. Um, there's definitely more than one, that's for sure. There's definitely a few out there feeding. And funny enough, yesterday it was common. It was a couple of comments that I seen cruising that area, which um made me think about uh, fishing to it. It was funny, it's, I was looking around the tree, there were fish there, but there's, there's something about um, snaggy trees, they don't... I think you you need a... Uh, you kind of, with, the, with like snags and stuff, you need some kind of area that they're going to feed within the vicinity of that tree. Um, a lot of the lakes I've fish where I've done well fishing to snags. You've got clearer areas nearby or it's hollowed out underneath the snags and they get up in there and you can you can catch them as they're moving in and out. But some of these areas just don't there just doesn't seem to be anything like that around. And um that's why I just put a solid bag out there. I probably should have put a chod out there to be honest but um I've got I've got a lot of confidence in solid bags as well. But um Anyway, I'm um, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna give them the rest of the bait. I think as a bit of a thank you, and um, get them used to having a look around there. Um, and um, get going. So yeah, uh, I really need to get going. Not that there's any time limit, it's only myself that's giving me a time limit because I don't want to get stuck in tr too much traffic, but <laughs> I already think it might go off again. The ducks have moved back over there now. I think I got the bite on the GoPro as well, because I had the GoPro uh, running. Hopefully the uh, film is still rolling, but um, that'd be quite cool. Didn't get much of the capture because it was, it was staring at the, the rod rest. But, um,
wait and I think I'll bang it go. Cool pass. Nearly. By the time I go back to the car and load it, I'm not going to be able to gate by it. It's 411. So. Snakes and that when it's born. Not that that bothers me. Um, These are grass snakes. Um, you do get others. Um, so much under each one here. There's a little track. Can't really see. But this is not bad. Before the, there's a tree to the right falling down. That never used to uh, be there. Um, I've been there. I used to be able to walk all the way along. I forgot my uh, forgot my glasses. So there's a swim I was in over there. So you can just about see the weed, yeah you can. Goes along here. Well, that's basically what I did, just trickled the bait all the way along there. Deep and soft, it's about eight or nine foot. And uh, sort of nailed that common. I think at one time this might have been a swim because there's some steps coming to the bank there. Uh, I mean, to be honest, you could fish it from this side. If you wanted to fish close in, if you're fishing for like a day, you'd probably put your stuff up the bank, make the way, you know, just have your rods down here with the net. Spread this bait and then I gotta get going, so let's get it done. Um, squirrel chasing each other. Um, I'm not gonna be able to film it because I ain't got the uh, camera on the tripod, I left it in the van. So, what I will do quick. Right, so I put about half, maybe three quarters of what I got. Probably two thirds. The ducks went a bit mental trying to get them. But, uh, it's all good. Right, I'm gonna end the video here because uh, I've got to go back to the van. It's 20 to 11. So, um, I should have uh, enough time to get sorted before I have to go. Um, yeah, it's been an enjoyable session. I, uh, really chuffed with getting that fish. I know it's, um, not one of the better ones, but it was an old fish. And, um, 
it's nice to get one on the first session back. And it's also nice to get a fish on a uh, off the back of um, a bit of thawful and looking around. Um, a lot of people on here seem to just drop into swims because they look good, but if I'm honest, every swim on here looks good. Um, sometimes it's quite hard to choose where to go just for the pure fact that there's so many options. Um, but I've started to look at trying to simplify. Um, I think that's the key, is to try and simplify the fishing. I was overcomplicating it thinking I was going to use um, like a, a pellet spod mix or something and you know like you would fish some of the gravel pits but you don't need to do that because of the nature of the, uh, the lake a, a light spread of bait like that um, so at the end of the day a kilo or so of bait, a kilo and a half of bait isn't a lot so, um, I think it definitely pays to, to just simplify it. Easy rigs, simple, um, simple baits and tactics, um, and just put it where they are. And that's the thing with the, the chod, you can pretty much stick it wherever they are. And, uh, similar to a solid bag, really. Um, which is why I also like solid bags, but as soon as I fed um, the boilies, uh, it made sense to keep them going in. Anyway, um, Back in the car, back in the van, I should say. All we'll loaded up. I don't know if you can see it in there. There he is. <laughs> Makes life so much easier. Um, right. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully, I'm getting next weekend, whether it's for a night or a few hours or something. But uh, hopefully, I'll get out. And um, we'll see what happens then. Um, I might try and come up in a week. Um, if I have a short day again, maybe even bring a couple of rods and just um, fish really light. And um, maybe even put a rod across to that bit where I just put out bait. Um, but I think I'd keep a bit of bait trickling in there if I can. And um, see if I can get them um, used to finding it. But, um, anyway, let's get going. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and um, check me out. I'm going to put up my um, Twitter um, and Instagram. Um, and um, if you like it, uh, click like and uh, subscribe. Cheers. Hope you all. Uh, you'll get a few if you're going out.